So I've been using the Composer 1 model for a while now for building out various features and doing refactorings on this game. And for some reason, I don't know what it is, like I feel like it's the best coding model that we have to date. Not because of the quality, because I do have to end up reprompting this model quite a bit to get it to work. But the iteration speed of this model is so fast that it just feels nice working with. My de facto standard before Composer 1 was Claude Code, like, but if you look at my usage right now, like I'm literally not using Claude Code that much. So I do want to kind of demo why I think Composer 1 is like the best model and hopefully this demo goes well. Like sometimes when you're using an LLM, it just doesn't perform when you're recording your screen. But I literally have been cooking and doing tons of refactoring and like adding features and it just feels nice working with because it just runs so fast. So one of the things I've been trying to add to this game is the ability to shoot a bow and arrow, right? And when the arrow hits the zombie, I want to make sure the arrow gets added to the zombies inventory so that later when you kill the zombie and you loot them you can get your arrows back so it's kind of like an infinite ammo type of weapon so let's try to see if we can add that to our game and how many prompts it takes us to do now i do want you to focus in on how fast it turns through the prompt and gives you a response which i find really nice because then you can go back and like reprompt it and if you have multiple chat windows when you're working on various features you can assume that when you click on the next chat window it's already done doing its operation so we're going to switch this to plan mode because I do think planning does help get better outputs when it comes to Composer 1. I've been kind of doing this. So let's just go ahead and prompt this out. I need to add a new weapon type called a bow and it uses an ammo type called an arrow. When a player shoots the bow, it should shoot a slower projectile at uh, the zombies. And if the zombie gets hit by the arrow, it should add the arrow to the zombies inventory and deal one damage. Every time an arrow gets into the zombie's inventory, make sure you increment the count of the arrow stack by one. Eventually, when the zombie dies and it gets looted, the same stack count should drop onto the ground, which later, when the user picks up, should add that same stack count to the player's inventory. So, for example, if I shoot the zombie three times, I kill them and loot them, I should be able to pick up three arrows from the ground. All right, so a pretty long prompt, but this is basically how I've been kind of doing my uh, agentic coding. And by the way, if you guys are interested in learning more about agentic coding, go to agenticjumpstart.com and join my wait list. I've been working on a course. I have like 20 or 30 videos recorded already where I walk you through my tips and tricks of how you can use agentic coding to become a much more productive developer. I've been using Claude Code and Cursor since they kind of came out, and I've learned a lot over the years. So, so join the waitlist if that sounds interesting. To you. Now, often when I'm prompting, I will actually tag certain files so that it'll actually know how to implement this, but I have actually found that it's just really good at just figuring this stuff out. So we're just gonna go ahead and kick this off and see how the first iteration kind of does. And I want you to pay attention to how fast it'll kind of churn through uh, the output, right? Usually with Claude Code, uh, for example, I've been using Claude Code extensively for the longest time, and I haven't even been using it that much for the past week because I've just been using Composer 1. I find it to be a much faster, more fun model to work with. But who knows, maybe I'll go back. But anyway, so we have a plan over here, and we can read through this and make sure that it kind of has everything that we need. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and just build this, and that should modify my project to add in the new weapon type. I'm going to try not to edit this part and just let it kind of churn through, but uh, hopefully it runs fast like I normally see it run. And as you can tell, I mean, it's just like churning through all my files and just adding the new weapon types and also the new ammo types. Hopefully this will be a one shot prompt. I doubt it. Uh, one thing I'll say about Composer 1 is that it's not often a one shot prompt, but the follow up prompts run so fast that it's like it doesn't matter, right? You can just go ahead and reprompt it, tag some more context, and eventually it kind of like figures it out. Okay, so it looks like it's done. Okay, still working. Let's make the bow. Uh, let's also make sure that we can't fire without arrows. Okay, we can't fire without arrows. Let's spawn an arrow. And it looks like it's firing, but we do have like a little issue in terms of the client not being able to do this. So the cool thing I like about this is it's so fast to do iteration on Composer 1. Please fix this that I can just kick this off and it'll be done in like five seconds. Okay, that's done. Let's go back to the game and see if it works. Okay, I'm able to shoot the arrow and it's decrementing my ammo. 
Let's spawn a zombie as well. I didn't mean to spawn two. Okay, let's loot the zombie. And then we should be able to pick up three arrows. Yep, so that works. That one should have like two on it. There. So again, like, basically just added a bow and arrow. We added the ammo. We added the ability to have it get added to the zombie's inventory. You kill the zombie, you loot it, you get your arrows back. It took two prompts. Now, doing the same thing with Claude Code, I feel like it would have taken much longer. You'd probably have to use Opus to plan it out. You'd have to use Sonnet 4.5 to implement it. And it might even still be cooking before it even finished. Now, one thing that might be cool to do is I do want to actually, like, stash this. Uh, I'll make a new, like, branch. I'll say, like, get check out uh, bow arrow. We're going to add this. Uh, let's do this. Adding bow. Now, let me try the same thing with Claude Code. I went ahead and just stash those changes. And we're going to try one more time with the exact same prompt with Claude Code. We're going to switch it to plan mode. Let's go to plan mode. And I wonder if we should switch it to um, Opus. The default is Sonnet 4.5, um, but they say Opus is legacy, so maybe we should just keep it at 4.5. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that same prompt, and let's see if it can achieve the same quality of results and how long it actually takes as well. Now, I did start a stopwatch for the Claude Sonnet uh, benchmark. I probably should have done it for the uh, the Composer one, but I'm a bad content creator, so like we're just not gonna go with that. And again, like I'm not a cursor sponsor, like I'm not sponsored by cursor. I just, I just feel like composer one is just, it just feels nicer to work with. I don't know, but we'll sit here and wait and see what happens. It's going to try to plan out this whole thing with the exact same prompt. And then I'll kick off the LM to actually implement the plan. And we'll see if it gets it correct the first time. I would bet money that it won't because I've tried similar things with Claude code and it just doesn't get it right the first time. I mean, just for the plan alone, we're two minutes and 30 seconds in, and it's still just planning. I'm pretty sure Composer 1 had the plan done in like 20 seconds or 30 seconds, which is, again, why I really like Composer 1. I just feel like I'm being more productive, and whether or not I'm actually being more productive, the feeling of being more productive just makes coding with LLMs and agentic coding just more fun. All right, so now we're like three minutes in and it's asking me some information. How much damage does each arrow do? I'm pretty sure I told it, but maybe not. How should the bow projectile behave? Just a straight line. Uh, what should the bow's cooldown fire rate be? I'll say like slow. Should arrows have a maximum stat count in inventory? I'm going to say unlimited. We'll just submit this and see if it can finish planning. All right, so now I kicked off the actual implementation. We're about like four, almost five minutes in. And it's going through my files and adding some stuff. All right, sorry, I had to step away, so I don't know how long this thing actually took, but it did finish. So let's go back to the UI and see. And then you go to the UI and you notice that there is a bug, and so it's still not working, and we have to go and reprompt Sauna 4.5 to fix it. And that's going to take another minute or so, depending on how intricate the bug is. I guess the point of this video is I've been coding with Claude Code primarily for a while now, and it still has a chance to not do what you want correctly. Like it's still going to break your, your app and you have to reprompt it to fix it. And Composer 1 is still going to break your app and you have to reprompt it to fix it. The difference is Composer 1 runs so much faster that I don't have to sit around watching a terminal sit there thinking. I literally see stuff stream through on my chat panel and then it finishes in like a third of the time. I can go and check out the application and I can go and test it and I don't know like if you guys haven't played around with composer one check it out because i do feel like it might be the best model to date that we have for coding and if you haven't experienced the speed of which it churns out code you won't really relate to this video or what i'm saying and for those of you who use other models like codex like i found codex to be the slowest freaking model out of all of them like sometimes it's really good at debugging really intricate bugs and i will just often click codex when i know it's a hard bug to debug but again, like you're you're spending like five minutes waiting for Codex to think throughout your whole code base and solve the issue. Whereas Composer One, if you can actually tag the right context because you have a good understanding of your code base, you can often fix the issue much faster. Like if you look here over here in Claude Code, it looks like it didn't even like register any of the entities on my front in which uh, Composer One was able to do the first try, which is a pretty big thing that it missed out on. All right, let's test this out. I'm gonna spawn a bow and I'm also gonna spawn an arrow ammo. Pick up both of them. I'm gonna shoot. Okay, that's working. Let's spawn a zombie and hopefully. Okay, 
Okay, it dropped the arrows. We pick it up. We should have three. And it put it to 20. So again, this didn't even solve it correctly. So my point is, is that like, Sonic 4.5 will not solve your bugs and they will not implement your stuff the first try. And you have to basically reprompt it. And at this point, the model that is able to iterate faster, I think is gonna win. And Composer 1, from what I've seen, is the model that does this perfectly well. So, so definitely check it out and also leave a comment below if you've tried Composer 1. Do you feel the same way I'm feeling? Because I might actually cancel my Claude subscription because I just, it's not worth paying $100 a month for this when I have this model over here that runs so much faster and basically is able to, in this scenario, the quality output, it managed to get it correct after two prompts. I have to go and now prompt this a third time to fix it because again, the inventory stacking count was just off. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a good day and happy coding.